Okay, welcome to this Code Rage 9 C session using push notifications on iOS and Android. I'm David I, Vice President of Developer Relations and Chief Evangelist at Embarcadero Technologies. There's my email address, my Twitter account, and my blog on the new community site for Embarcadero. What we're going to cover today is mobile push notifications for iOS and Android. And I'm going to focus on using two backend as a service systems convey and parse. You can also use coding techniques to go direct to the push notification systems for the two mobile devices. But I'm going to use those back in as a service. They do a lot of work for me and it's a good way to not have to worry about creating your own push notification servers. And we also have several components that make it easier to do the work. I'm going to talk about the components for back in as a service, do a bunch of demonstrations, I'll give you some resources, and we'll do some Q&A at the end iOS and Android devices support notifications, both local notifications and push notifications coming from a server. You can push those notifications to the device using the Apple Push Notification Service and the Google Cloud Messaging Service, depending on which device and system you're using. On the server side, you can use backend as a service providers like Parse, Convey, and App42, which all have components to work with C++ Builder XZ7 and our App Method September 2014 release. Now you can also use other services by calling their APIs and you can create your own push notification servers. And there are several articles available on the internet about creating your own push notification servers. On the client side we deliver a set of pre-built components but again you can also use third-party libraries and APIs to build push notification clients and servers. And I encourage you to check out Jeff LaFave's Code Rage 9 session in the Object Pascal track where he uses a third-party library to build a push client application on Android and also push through the Google Cloud messaging system a notification that gets to his device. In C++ Builder XZ7, we have a set of backend as a service client components which are based on the REST client architecture that was introduced back in XZ5. We have BAS client providers for parse and convey, two backend as a service providers, the native providers tparse provider, convey provider are included as well as several of the backend as a service infrastructures with these component wrappers for their APIs. One of those is to receive a T push event. Another one is to be able to have a, an application and push to the backend a notification that can then be delivered to the devices. App42 is a company that also has a provider component available for C++ Builder and App Method. What I'm going to do now is some demonstrations using push notifications. I'm going to use the parsing convey backend as a service systems. So let's go look at some of the different demonstrations. In the first demo, I'll show how you set up your device for iOS push notification application development. To get started with backend as a service push notifications for iOS, we need to go to our Apple developer account and make sure that we're all set up for push notifications. Go to the Member Center and log in. Once we've signed in, we'll go to the Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles page, and we'll go to the App ID page. This will show us the different App IDs that we've already set up, maybe or maybe not, with push notification support included. But let's start from scratch and create a new App ID. So we'll click on the plus sign and define a new app ID. So this will be my David I push app. We'll use the uh, ID prefix that's already selected for me. Next, we need to specify the explicit app ID. And this way, if we want any kind of unique provisioning or unique app services, we'll be able to associate this app ID with those. So let's, it says here we recommend using a reverse domain style string. Uh, it can be really any unique string com.davidi.pushapp, and we'll put a one on it in case we want to do multiple tests. We also want to make sure that we select any other services that we might need for our application. Since we want push notification, we'll click that checkbox and hit continue. And then it brings up the confirmation screen. It says confirm your app ID. There's the description. Uh, there's the identifier. We've got Game Center, in-app purchase, and push notification enabled. Let's hit Submit. And now that the registration is complete. 
The next step we need to do is to create a certificate for the app. So let's select the app and we'll click the edit button. So we need to create a development SSL certificate for this push app. So down here at the bottom is the development SSL certificate. We can create one. So we'll click the create certificate button. Next, it tells us that we need to create a CSR or a certificate signing request. So I need to go and bring up my keychain. So it says within the keychain access. So we'll go under keychain access and bring up the certificate assistant request a certificate from the certificate authority. So I enter the user email address for my Apple account, common name, and then I'll click the radio button, save to disk. We'll click continue, and then we need to save the certificate request. So we'll call this our David I push test one certificate. And so my certificate request has been created on the disk and we're done. Let's go back to the Apple developer program, hit continue. We can choose the CSR file, which was saved on our desktop. There it is. And then I'll click the generate and that will generate a certificate, download and install it in our system. So here are my certificates ready. I can download, install it. And here's my certificate, Apple development, iOS push services, com.davidi push app one. And back on my Apple developer page, under provisioning profiles, we can see the provision profiles we have. And we'll click the plus sign. And the provisioning profile that I need is the iOS app development profile. We'll hit continue. This is that app ID. It's sitting right there. So that's the one I just created in the previous step. I'll hit continue. And then it gives me a list of certificates that I wish to use in this provisioning profile. So we'll select the all and we'll select the devices. I've got my 4S and my iPad 4. We'll hit continue. We need to give this a profile name. So this is the David I push notification test number one. It says I have one certificate included. Here's the app ID, two devices included, my iPad 4 and my iPhone 4S. Click generate. And then now it says my provisioning profile is ready with push support. There's its name, type development, and the app ID, and it expires a year from now. So we'll download this profile. And then here on my hard drive is that push notification mobile provision. It's a developer provisioning profile generated today. We'll double click. And after double clicking, now in my organizer for Xcode, I can look and see that for my iPhone provisioning profiles, I have the David I push notification test profile and also the previous developer iOS profile that I've been using for some time. And also for my iPad 4, I've got two provisioning profiles, my original one and the push notification test profile. So those are the steps you go through using your Apple developer program portal and going through and creating a provisioning profile for development that supports push notifications. In this next demo, I show you how to use the Parse Backend as a Service to do iOS push notification to your iOS device. So I'm here in my Parse account and I can create a new app. So let's click the button here, create new app. We need to give it an app name. So I'll call this my David I push test one app. And it gives me uh, getting started, my push test app has been successfully created and it gives me a bunch of keys. Let's select the data browser page and we'll go to settings and select push notifications. And here we'll set up for a push notification. Uh, we need to provide a Apple push certificate. And it says here, this is only necessary if you plan on pushing to iOS devices. So we need a certificate file, a .p12 for the app. So we'll go to Keychain Access. We'll go to the certificate that I have for my iOS push services, that push app one. We'll right mouse click and choose Export Apple Development Push Access. 
and we want that personal information exchange P12 extension. Let's give it a name, and this is just my uh, certificates dot David I parse push uh, test one, I think it was called. I was calling it just a name. It's asking for a password, but parse doesn't support password protected. So we'll just say, OK. I need to specify my system administrator password. And then I can go back to the, the parse site. We'll turn, we'll turn on client push enabled. We'll go and select the certificate file. There's the P12. Say OK. And now for that app ID, I've got the push certificate. Now let's go and create a sample app. So we'll start by saying File New, FireMonkey Mobile Application. We'll just choose a blank application. Over in the component palette, we've got our BAAS, or Backend as a Service set of components, a parse provider, a convey provider, and some other components, for example, the push components. Let's start by putting a parse provider down. And over in the object inspector, we'll need to set the application ID, the master key, and the REST API key. So we'll put in the application ID, copy the master key, paste that in. and then the REST API key. We'll drop down a push event component. And we'll link that to the parse provider here in the object inspector. And then we'll put a memo on the user interface. And the memo we'll just use for containing some of the information about what's happening as far as push is concerned. We'll put a toolbar at the top and put a label inside of it. Set that to the contents. Take the label and, and align the text to the center. Then we'll align the memo to the rest of the client area. Now we need to hook some events associated with push events. So first one is device registered. So we'll just put out a string in the memo push event one device registered. And then for the token received event handler, we'll just put the string token received. So we can, again, this is just to know what's happening under the covers as we get push notification. There's an event for request token failed, uh, token request failed. And then finally, the push event received. We'll put out a string, which is the push received, and notice the parameter we're going to get is going to be whatever data comes from the, the push server from parse. So we'll add to the memo another line, and we'll just say the data dot message, which is a string. And we'll put a blank line. Go to Project Options, Entitlement List, and with an iOS device platform target, we'll turn on Receive Push Notification in iOS. And then Project Options Version Info, the CF Bundle Identifier, 
to that same name that we chose over in our app ID at Apple site, which was com.davidi.pushapp1. We'll click the OK. So the user interface is done for my mobile app uh, push notification test. There's just one more thing I need to do. Over in the doc wiki under iOS settings, it's reminding me that the REST API for convey and parse are accessed through secure HTTP or HTTPS. My app's going to need open SSL support. And on platforms that don't include the library, such as iOS, we can download them. And the link here is a download to in Project Indie uh, SSL subdirectory. So we go over here. And here's a bunch of the different open SSLs for Windows. There's a .7z file for static libraries for iOS. I've downloaded that zip file. And here are the libssl and libcrypto.a file, the static libraries. The other thing the doc wiki says is that these two files need to be in the linker library path, or you can put them in the project directory. I've copied those two files into my project directory so that the linker will find them. So now we're ready in the ID to build and deploy our application. So we'll make sure everything is saved. We'll click the Run button. There's the app icon appearing. Here's the splash screen. Here's the interface. The first thing you'll see is that since the app is set to get push notifications, I need to allow these notifications to take place. So we'll click OK. So now I need to go back to my parse site. Here's my application. And let's go and send a push. That's my iOS client. And we'll just type hello from parse. And we can either set it at a specific schedule, a certain time. We can set its expiration. And let's just do it now, send notification. And over here in my iOS application, I've got the push received and hello from parse. So let's go back and do the same thing in C++. Let's add a new project, C++, FireMonkey mobile application. We'll choose the blank application. We can take the same components and paste them into our application. I'm using the same key and the same push events. We need to make those C++ event handlers. I'll uh, add a toolbar. Okay. Put the memo down and align that to the rest of the client area. And then the push events will do the device registered. For device register, we'll just put out a string that says push events device registered. Hook the token registered. So this is device token registered, device request. And there's an optional string for the error message as well, if we want to use that. Push received. And memo one. And we'll take the data. output the message. Make sure that I have the two static libraries in my same folder as my project. So the last two things to do in our project is make sure that we have the right project options set for iOS. First is under entitlements list, make sure that receive push notifications in iOS is set to true. And under the version information, make sure that the CF bundle identifier is my Apple ID, which is that com.davidi push app one. We'll save everything and then we'll do a run. Here's the splash screen. And there's my C++. So the device token was received, the device re was registered. We can go and send a push. And let's, uh, hello, C++ builder from parse. Send it now. 
and here's the event happening over push event push received hello C++ builder from parse in this next demo I use the convey backend as a service system and show how you can build mobile client applications that can receive iOS push notifications and now I'm going to show you how to create an app and do push notifications with convey I've logged into my I've logged into my developer console console that convey.com and I've clicked the new button to create a new app so what my what's my app called let's just call it convey uh, push test one and I'm going to use the rest PI click the create app back in go up here to my apps and choose that app that I have convey push test one uh, development and it'll give me my dashboard to see how many users how many API calls I've made it also gives me my API keys so we'll need to remember those we can then go up to add-ons choose messaging push and we'll see the configuration page for push and it has an area for Google Cloud messaging configuration or GCM and also our iOS configuration the SSL certificate and the password so we can go to where we saved our SSL certificate and let's go back to the IDE and create a convey version of our application so we'll go back to our project group in the IDE we'll add a new project this will be a, a C++ mobile project blank application and this time we'll put down the convey provider and then we'll put down the push events component that already gets connected to the provider let's put a toolbar align that to the client contents make the text be convey push C++ and align that at the center and then the rest we'll put a memo just like we did before we'll align that to the rest of the client area and then when we get the push events like we did before device registered token received request failed and push received we can go steal that code from our other application written in C++ we'll set the target platform to iOS just need to make sure that we also put the SSL static libraries in the subdirectory like we did for the parse iOS and then we need to make sure to set the project options for iOS so entitlements turn on receive push notifications and in the version info set the bundle identifier to be the name of my push profile that I've set up for push so after I've built the user interface of my convey iOS push C++ app I've got the convey provider and the push events and we've hooked the code associated with the device registered the token received the token request failed and the push received where we're going to pump out the message that we get from the push message so that code is all set up we just need to put in a few properties in the convey provider there's the app key uh, app secret master secret and then I need to provide a username and password as well so over on the convey side I've got my console with my convey push test one app so we'll copy the it at the app key and we'll paste that in we'll get the app secret and we'll paste that into the property we'll get the master secret and we'll paste that in and then I need to go over to the add-ons core users and here's where I can create uh, different users I've got a so we'll go and put that username in let's go back to the uh, dashboard and there's a development tab we can go down under add-ons messaging push and here we can put some text in but let's make sure we have our app uh, compiled properly and running on the iOS device now it's deploying my application over the first thing we'll see is the splash screen come up and then as the application starts and I've got that convey provider it connects to the convey service and then some of those events have happened the first one was uh, device registered and token registered so at this point I'm ready to say hello C++ builder xc6 from convey and we get the push event received 
on our iOS C++ application and the string that was part of the message. So that's how easy it is to work with your iOS device with Convey and doing push notifications. In this demo, I show how you can set up your device for Android push notification application development, including setting up your Google Cloud messaging account and information. I'm going to show you how to do a push notification on Android. The first thing I need to do is set up Google Cloud messaging for my application. So we go to console.developers.google.com and it's asking me to log in. So I'll log in with my uh, Google account. And now I'm here in my Google Developer Console and we'll say create a project. This will be my uh, Android push demo and it gives me a, uh, a project ID. I'll agree to the terms and hit create. And we've got this create a project Android push demo and here's my project now on the project list. So we'll go to the project page and here I've got my project ID and my project number so we'll save those. We'll click on the APIs and we'll want to turn on Google Cloud Messaging for Android. Now that's turned on. We'll go to credentials and we'll create a new key in the public API access. It just has the APIs represented in the Google Developers Console unique identifier so let's create server key and for testing purposes we can put in uh, whatever we want but let's just start with no uh, IP address and then finally here's a demo that shows how to create an Android mobile application that uses Google Cloud messaging and the convey back in as a service so that your Android device can receive push notification we'll need to create a project at convey so we'll go to our convey a uh, console and we'll create a new project and we'll call this our Android push uh, demo which we'll is other and we're going to use the rest API so we'll create the back end for that new app and we've got a, an app key app secret and master secret for this new project we'll go to add-ons and for this app we'll select push under messaging project number. We need to specify the in app key from the Google Developer Console. So we'll save that. And then we need to go and create a, a user. So we'll go over to the XZ6 IDE and we'll create an Android push example and add this to our project group. So we'll add a new project. We want to do a Object Pascal mobile application We'll make it a blank application. We'll put in the, the convey provider. And under Android push, we need to specify the Google Cloud messaging app ID. And then for convey the app key, the app secret, the master secret, and the username, and the password. We'll put in a toolbar. And this will be, uh, we'll put a label in it, align that able to the contents of the toolbar. And this is our Android push convey, convey, or Apple push convey uh, object Pascal. And let's align this to the center. And then we'll put a memo. We'll align that to the rest of the client area. And then we'll drop down a T push event. All right, now we just, like we did before for parse an iOS and can convey an iOS, we'll hook the four events in the T push events component and we'll output the code. In this case, we want to get the GCM global cloud messaging message. We want to test to see if we've got the startup notification and then we'll output the GCM message string. 
and then go and look for any extras that might be available and dump those out as well. So we've got our user interface and we've got our event handlers for the push events. And then we need to go in and modify the Android manifest template. So we'll go and add the manifest template to our project so that it's there. And we need to add a few lines in the permissions section. And then in the doc wiki for creating the application as part of the tutorial using remote notifications, iOS and Android, we've got the lines of code that we need to insert in the uses permission area. So we'll just copy those and we'll paste them. And it says the permission, we're going to use the internet. GCM requires an Android account. This will keep the processor from sleeping. When a message is received, we'll set wake lock and then set the permission to receive message. And it can receive data messages as well. And then down in the activity section, we've got the notification alarm. And we need to add code for registering the receiver class. And finally, and add this add a service as well. Let's make sure that our target platform is set to Android. Okay, so after I've set up the provider uh, for Android push and I've got my push events hooked, uh, we've got all those set. Uh, here's the push received again where I'm dumping out the message that comes to me in the data. I also dump out if there's any extras um, that are part of the push data. We'll get the key and the value pair for those. I've hooked the form activate, but we could have had on create form where I'll get the push event startup notification data if it exists. If I started the application um, from the alert, if I started the application from the push notification, then I'll dump out the Google Cloud messaging message and the extras through the startup notification in the push event. So let's go and uh, set the target platform. And I've got my Nexus 7 here. And now you'll see that my device has been registered. It got the device token received. So we can go back to convey. Let's send a push. Here's hello from convey. We'll send the push notification and switch back. And here comes the hello from convey. So that's how easy it is to add convey Android push event support. So now we'll kick the app out of memory. And we'll go back to convey. And we'll say hello from convey push notification to closed app. We'll send the push notification. And there's the closed app. When the app launches, we get hello from convey push notification to closed app. It came from here's a wake lock ID, some extras that also are displayed. Here are a set of resources, developer information from Apple about Apple push notification service infrastructure. Here's a couple links for information about how to work with the Google Cloud messaging system. And I remind you to check out Jeff LaFave's Code Rage 9 Object Pascal session. He builds an example using third party library that works with Google Cloud messaging to build Android applications that can receive push notifications. Here's the links to the three backend as a service provider systems that support C Builder XE7, Parse, Convey, and App42. And as I showed, we include the BAS provider components for Parse and Convey in the product. You can also go to App42's site to download the App42 provider. And finally, I include a link to our DocWiki tutorial, which shows you how to build and use remote notifications on iOS and Android. And that's it for this Code Rage session about push notifications on iOS and Android using backend as a service providers. 
and it's time for Q&A, and thank you. Okay, and that was a combination of some video clips I'd done over the over time. All of it is exactly the same in XZ7, and I will upload those resource links and on a blog post. I have all the C++ projects for all the examples, as well as the Delphi examples. So I will put up um, a zip file, probably on Code Central, for all the source code for the C++, and I'll, I'll put the Pascal in the same zip file. You saw, all I'm doing is using memos and getting strings. So uh, let's see. Um, Luis Felipe is asking, what classes here to create our implementation of push? Oh, if, well, here's a question. If you want to be able to create your own servers, that's one thing. And, and there are people out on the Internet who've created their own servers. Jeff used just GCM directly, and he's got a third-party library. And so I'm going to take his Pascal project and create a C++ version of what he's done. Uh, he doesn't rely on parse or convey or anything else. He's just using GCM directly. So I'll, uh, I'll get that done, and it'll be in the zip file as well. So that way you don't have to do anything. You don't have to build one. But otherwise, I just use um, those components, and parse and convey have free levels and paid levels of the number of users and number of pushes that you take, and they have object storage and a bunch of other things. At the same time, if you came to the EMS sessions uh, with Jim and everybody else, EMS server is going to end up with some additional features over time. So it could be EMS, could also be a push server. And it's all built in to the components and then the underlying APIs that, that implement those BAS components. Uh, otherwise, you can call directly into the Google, Android, and Apple APIs if you want. So it's your choice if you want to use Apple's push APIs to get to your iOS devices or your users' iOS devices, or whether you want to use Google Cloud Messaging to get to iOS or Android devices. GCM on its own is free. For Apple, you need to either have a your own server, and I'll include links to some articles in my blog for people who have built their own servers to push to iOS devices. And so um, everything is included in XE7 C++. Just go to the tutorial link I had and to the push providers help to see what you need to use. You can even build into an application you have, let's say a desktop app, server app. If you're using the, the backend as a service systems, there's a backend push component where if you put the same keys in, you could have, for example, a server application if something happened or a desktop app, it can send data into these systems and have the push happen to your devices. So that's called the T backend push component. Um, let's see. How viable is it to use your own backend push messages out? Um, that's the T backend push component. We don't have a wizard or project template for building your own push servers. But again, that is doable. Uh, do you have to use GCM? Um, no, you don't. But it's free and provided for everybody by Google. So why not use it? Um, you just need to be able to follow the protocols in the documentation on Android and on Apple on what you have to do from a, your own server to send to devices, whether they're iOS devices or Android devices. Let's see. 
Um, not being in the U.S., I'm not a um, specialist on Patriot Act or privacy or other things. I'll have to refer you to Google Cloud Messaging Infrastructure. Parse and Convey have their own statements about what can and cannot be done and, and what you store and how it's encrypted and so on. So I'll point you to the different uh, infrastructure services, Apple, Google, Parse, Convey, App42, and others uh, to answer that question, Rob. We don't want to pass our customers' data onto somebody else's cloud. Uh, again, I understand all of that is in a sense up to you. You can keep very minimal information. And again, you can create your own cloud notification services and servers. And you need to just it, read about the things you need to do to be able to broadcast something out to devices, whether they're iOS or Android devices, and how that works through the iOS API and so on and again you can create a rest server and talk to rest server and then it still has to go through some mechanism for the messages to be broadcast out to one or more of your users and both parse and convey allow you to create groups and do queries uh, you saw i was sending to one and i had one subscriber most applications that you see when they ask for Notif you know, will you allow this application to send you push notifications? The user makes that decision, and then that causes usually a call to register that device. Uh, and whether you ask the users for additional information, then um, you have to think about what that might mean from a privacy Patriot Act laws in certain countries and so on and again I show different versions of, of C++ applications and and Pascal and you can build push servers in C++ builder you can build mobile applications in C++ builder that can accept Push, mess, push messages, just as all the apps that we're using on these devices have options for the user to say, yes, I want to receive push notifications. Uh, you can use Google Cloud Messaging to go to iOS or to Android. You can use Parse and Convey to go to iOS or Android. And so er you can build everything in C++ Builder that you need. Now, Again, the question about what you're storing, what you're keeping track of, and all of that, that's not my world. That's the providers and the infrastructure and the telcos and, and all the things that happen related to your devices and how they're doing things. Apple, you use the APNS property. Each of those components I showed you, for example, the T push event component, there's a high level property called message. And message will work and give you the string and the data regardless of what system you're on. So you saw I wrote one code, didn't matter whether it was iOS or Android, and I used the message property. Uh, it didn't matter whether it was Apple push, Android push, what device I was running on. There is a sub property that lets you get at additional information and so that sub property is either APNS and it has sub sub properties with additional properties that you can get in your code and the other one was GCM and then it has again the extras property and additional properties uh, you can also specify a sound file for example for iOS as one of the APNS sub properties so that you can get a tone or some sound played when you receive a push notification from someone. So you have total control as a developer of 
what is being sent, what is being stored, what is being received uh, in these in these applications, and it's all done through lower level classes and runtime library that implement the interfaces to the APIs on the platforms, and these higher level components, which I showed you, for example, if you're using the BAS provider components. So uh, you have total control about what you want to do. And again, in my in a blog post that I'll put up early next week, I'll give you links to all sorts of resources, articles, libraries, tools, and other things you can use with C++ Builder, as well as the sample programs. The other part that we take care of for you, there's some coding, and you saw that startup code, for example. There's three states or phases that a mobile app can be in to receive push notifications once you've authorized that you want that app on your device to receive push notifications. One is if the application is running and it's on the top, the mobile app, you'll get the push notification appear. Um, now that data might do something. You know, in my case, I was just displaying the string in a memo. But of course, it comes in as an event handler, and that data, whatever it might be, could be JSON or something, might be used internally to do something. The second state is that your app is, is in memory, but it's in the background. Then if you receive a notification, that app will come to the front. The third option is that you, the application is not in memory. It's been kicked out of memory by the operating system or you personally you know, double clicked on, on your iOS home button and you kicked it out of memory. Or on Android, you, you bring up the little uh, list of apps and you kick it out of memory. If, you, if a push notification is received, then you'll see the notification show up in the notification list on iOS and Android and you tap on it and the app will be loaded and whatever your app does with that notification data will uh, will do its thing navigate to a page you know play a sound whatever it might be whatever your app's doing and again in this case I wanted to keep it simple and just display what is being sent the message text any extras data that might be passed along uh, could and again that text could be JSON XML uh, could be something else could be encrypted I mean whatever you're doing uh, the question here from Luis Felipe, what about other platforms? Right now, the components that we're using with the BAS providers are for iOS and Android, for the mobile applications. But there are other notification systems. Uh, Windows has a notification down in the tool tray, for example. Uh, OS X has a notification and other platforms. So the team is looking at how we might wrap other client platform notification systems so that again you could do the same thing uh, that you could have a notification show up on your OS 10 screen or have a notification show up on your uh, Windows machine or if we ever support other mobile platforms have the same code send notifications to those devices uh, as long as we're targeting building applications for them. So right now we're, this is what we're providing in XE7 and we provide it in XE5 and XE6 um, with the platform support and then with the BAS components for parse and convey and you can download a free component, provider component from App42. There are other messaging systems, I understand that Rob, and you could decide to build up some code, maybe components, that could be compiled and linked into a C++ iOS and Android application or a desktop application that would receive messaging from other systems. But if you're going to hook into the, the, the notification systems of Android and, and iOS, they have APIs and permissions that you have to turn on if you want to hook into those notification systems. If your app is sitting there 
or wants to be launched, for example, because it got a message from some other system and some other APIs or whatever, that's up to you, right? Now, these are developer tools. And again, there are other libraries and systems that people have, and they have samples that and APIs that would allow you to build a, an Android client app that would connect to some other system. It doesn't have to be GCM or APNS. In the case of the components we have for backend as a service, that's the way it works with those components, T push events, T backend push, and so on. But someone else could build components or runtime libraries that you could use in your applications. And we're looking at other providers that we might add in the future. And there's also a T custom provider, so you could build your own provider. That's how App42 did it. We did the work for Parse and Convey with their help. Uh, and App42, we helped them, but they built their App42 provider for backend as a service. So again, someone else could build a provider for uh, a messaging system like Zero MQ. Uh, whether we do it, that's up to JT product management and, and the business people to decide. Okay? And I'll catch up on typing these answers into the questions uh, and comments that you've been putting in. It's just, I found that when I'm all by myself, not only the, the presenter, but running the room, that I, can't, I get behind trying to answer the questions as the person who did it and uh, and typing in the answers at the same time. I, it just takes forever. So while the next session is happening, I'll, I'll type in the answers in the, in the question log. But again, I'll do a blog post uh, with all the information and zip up the files and so on. Uh, this stuff and why I use these BAS components is so easy, but I, again, I could do it all in code. And I will take uh, Jeff LaFave's uh, Pascal example, I forget the library, it's a jar file on Android and he built an interface to the jar file using the Java to OP and then he, and then I'm going to go from C++ through that Pascal interface to get to that jar file and I will do that and I forget what the name of that library is but again you can also watch the replay once we put it up because I think his session already happened in the Pascal track. Um, and see how he used a third-party library. And again, that library allowed him to hook into GCM. And Google gives you GCM for free. For I don't know if there's a limit on the number of calls or users. You can check that out from the licensing agreements for Google Cloud Messaging. And the same for, for uh, Apple as well.